everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. Today we're going to talk about the Cooler Master H500. Not to be confused with the H500 M and P. And there could be another version, I don't really know. Anyway, if you're new here, think about hitting that subscribe, hit that bell for future notifications, and hit that like, it really helps me out. Now, I got two affiliate links, TubeBuddy, you can use it on your channel, it's absolutely free. And there's a 30 day trial for Pro XPN. Check that out. Uh, if you click on that link and do the 30 day trial, I get a bit of a kickback and it helps me out. So there's that. So let's get on and have a look at the case. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our case out of the box. Now this is a monster of a case, much bigger than what I, I think I first realized. I got a little Make It Yours Master Case H500. Tells you everything that comes with it and the warranty information. We're gonna get the styrofoam off and the reveal. Tempered glass side panel. It has a beautiful tempered glass side panel. It has a carrying handle now. Hopefully, let's see. Yep, it supports the weight. It's a bit heavy. Very solid material. Solid, uh, well constructed. It has a magnetic uh, dust filter on the top. Comes off. You got room for fans here. So having a look at the top of the case, we have two USB 3.0 and two USB 2.0. Now the interesting thing that I noticed right away is 3.0 but it doesn't have the normal designation which is usually that these slots here are blue. So just something to be aware of. You've got your headphone and mic jack, your power button and you've got a cutout here which is meant to be a carrying handle. So you can lift it up. Now lifting it up shows you you've got two 200 millimeter fans. And I'll get this uh, front piece off and show you what that looks like. Now the only thing I don't like about the tempered glass is the two screws that hold it in place are flat screwdrivers, which every other case has the Phillips. So when you put it in, it's not a big deal, it's just a different uh, aspect to taking it off. Once you get this off, it kind of pushes in through this little plastic piece here. So just keep that in mind. So that's the screw that goes in it. So remove all of the front panels is the same as always. You just have to pull on both sides here. Just give it a pull. Right, it's a bit tough, <laughs> but it comes off. And that's the main factor. So there's your mesh. There's your inside. So we're going to leave that off for a second. And now you can see your 200 millimeter fans. So, and those are RGB as well, by the way. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you is it has a clear front panel that you can replace the mesh with. Uh, it's better for aesthetics. It's going to restrict your airflow a little bit. And it has four screws on each side. All right, so here, 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 and here on both sides. So you take that off, uh, take your mesh off, put that on, and you're good to go. It'll look better. The airflow is not going to be quite as good, but at least they gave you both options. And old Sparky here wanted to get up and say hi. Yes, he did. Anyway, moving on. So having a look at the inside, you can see it's got a huge, huge cutout here. So if you're going to put on a cooler afterward, or you want to switch up your stock cooler later on, that's going to provide you lots of room to work with with the motherboard in the back. You've got a little bit of a shroud here. Basically, it's used for hiding your cables behind. So if it provides a really great cable management. So you can hide it behind here. And you get your shroud right here for covering up your power supply. Now, it's only half, which is great. But you can also remove it if it gets in your way or you don't like it. There's a thumb screw here. It just takes off and this whole thing will come out. And you've got two hard drive bays for 
either two, three and a half, or two and a half. So I would use it for three and a half personally, but that's all it is. Just completely toolless this case. And takes it out and just slide it back in. And you've got room for two SSDs. So it shows you the position for where your SSDs are going to go. But of course, they're not going in here. They're going to go on the reverse side of the case. And I'll show you that uh, later on. And of course, like I said before, you've got your 120 millimeter uh, rear exhaust fan. And it's a three pin connector, not four. I'd like to see a four on there, but you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots for putting in graphics cards or adapters, whatever it happens to be. It'll take an ATX, micro ATX, and a mini ITX. The only thing I don't like is on this case is you're missing standoffs. You've got one here, but these ones, if you're using an ATX board, they're all missing. So you're going to have to put all of those in, which I'll show you later on. Uh, there is a bag of screws and everything comes with this, and it's just tucked away underneath the uh, shroud for the power supply. It has nice rubber grommets, which are, I think, a little bit better than what I've seen in the past. So we're going to have a look at the back of the case. Before moving on to the other side of the case, I wanted to show you the bottom. You've got these nice sturdy feet on it. You have your um, filter for your power supply. Comes out, goes in pretty easy. No real problems there. If you want to remove your hard drive cages, the screw is right here, and it's just a thumbnail screw. And just you go in here and you can just undo it and take it out and you're good to go now the other thing i want to point out the shroud is just in here okay you can see how it just clicks in place once you undo that thumb screw in the back this will just slide forward and then you can just take it out if you want to so you can take that shroud right off now taking off the other side there's just two screws here one on the top one on the bottom and you just have to unscrew them so unscrew them just take them out here. Now they don't stay in. And then you just pull it back. It comes off very easy. Now, solid construction. Very, very well built. So as I mentioned before, you can see your four spaces. Okay, four SSD here, another one here. And you've got lots of routing here for cables. You've got about an inch of space between here and here, so your cable management should work really, really well. Now, should you want to take off the little shroud on the inside that comes down, there are three screws here that hold it in place, so you can just take that out and remove it if you want to. And as you can see, you've got lots of cables, everything comes up from here. Now, the nice thing uh, about when this was taken off is none of the cables attached to your front panel. And you've got space in here for a radiator, and you can put one on top, and you can even put one on the back if you want. And I'll give you the dimensions, the size, and all that in a little bit here. Now, if for some reason you need to take off your top panel, maybe this is not working, and maybe you have to RMA it back. The beauty of this is you can. There's just one screw right here, another screw on this side. Take those off. This all pops off. So that's a, that's a pretty good feature. I kind of like that feature. So one of the things I like to do every now and then in my video is give you the dimensions. So I wanted to tell you the dimensions of the case. So let's talk a little bit about color. So this one is iron gray. Now the materials are uh, plastic and steel uh, mesh. And the body is steel. And the side panel is tempered glass and the other side is steel as well. Very solid construction. Uh, dimensions, length, width, and height are 525 by 228 by 502 millimeters or 20.7 inches by 9 inches by 19.8 inches. As I said before, mini ITX, micro ATX, and ATX max width of 280 millimeter has seven expansion slots, room for two, three and a half or two and a half inch drives, and an additional two and a half inch uh, SSDs. You have pre-installed fans, you have the front two 200 millimeter RGB fan, and they run at speeds of 800 uh, RPM. And the connectors are three pin and RGB four pin. And the rear is a 120 millimeter fan, and it runs at a speed of 1200 RPM. And as I said, it's a three pin. 
On the top, you can put a 120, 140 times 2, or 200 millimeter fan times 1. On the front, you can do a 120 millimeter fan times 3, or 140 millimeter, or 200 millimeter fans times 2. Personally, I would just keep them the way they are. In the rear, like I said, 120 millimeter fan times 1. And now on the top, you can do a 120, 140, or 240 millimeter uh, for fans. Now, for liquid cooling support, you can also do in the front 120, 140, 200, 240, 280, and then 360. And there's ample room for that. And of course, a 120 again in the rear. And 120, 140, and 240 was the radiator on the top, is what I meant to say. Uh, for your CPU cooler clearance, you've got 167 millimeters. And your GPU goes to 410, which pretty much goes. To most GPUs, I'm not sure about the RTX. How it's it's a monstrous uh, GPU, so you'd have to measure that to be sure. Your power supply support is a bottom mount, and it's an ATX PS2. And the 200 millimeter uh, RGB fans that are pre-installed in the front also include an RGB controller. And the lighting system can also be controlled by the reset switch uh, to cycle through color and mode. Now the 500 H500 offers 410 millimeter GPU clearance for the latest cards, uh, which ensures that the future upgrades will not be limited by space, uh, makes it easier for transportation because of the handle, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just to show you where that thumb screw is, it's just right down here. So you'd probably have to take this out to give you like some room to work with, so you can get your hand in there and just undo that. So putting in your power supply, you will need to remove this thumb screw and then slide forward your um, shroud and it'll just lift off because otherwise not only can you not get your power supply in you're not going to find your little bag of goodies that you're going to need for all the standoffs and all that kind of good stuff okay so once we get our little bag of goodies out of there I'm just going to go over the cables real quick. So you've got your normal case fan cables, but you've got your reset, HDD LED, your PLED positive and negative, and of course we have another thing for a fan. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out is inside here is your connectors for your RGB. Okay, and then you've got this, which also came in that bag. That'll power through the SATA. This will plug into one of these. I'll figure that out later. Um, and that'll just allow you to power your fans and run everything. And of course you just have your little bag of screws and some ties to for your cable management. And they even give you a little uh, cloth just to clean your uh, tempered glass window. That's pretty nice. So there's only one more thing to do and that's to put in the power supply and light it up a little bit and show you some of the RGB. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's all fired up. You've connected all your uh, fans. Now, it does have the uh, connector here. So this is inside your case. So if you didn't have, uh, like in previous cases where you don't have the um, RGB on your motherboard or you don't have the software to control it, you can control it with this. So just to show you, I'll just quickly change some of the colors and fan speeds, etc. So it just changes slightly Well, that's the one they advertise it with, which just looks pretty darn sharp, actually. That's in breathing mode, I believe. But once you, if it's in your case and your motherboard has the support for it, then you're not going to have any issues in that respect. Now, one thing I did notice is these 200 millimeter fans in the front are completely quiet, but the one in the back, the 120 millimeter rear exhaust fan, is very noisy uh, so I will be replacing that so just be aware of that if you get it it could be noisy you may need to replace it the ones in the front perfect so something I wanted to show you that uh, I wasn't able to show you before because it kind of all went fuzzy so I kind of deleted that clip and I put it in here this is your tempered glass now when you unscrew it you can just see it kind of just sits there 
because it's got a little lip on the bottom that basically holds it in place. So if you were to take it out and you forgot, uh, it's not just going to fall out. It's just going to set there in place. And then you can just simply grab it from the sides and it's out of your way. So sometimes I just wanted to explain because uh, it's always good to know this kind of stuff. Uh, and that's how to connect your RGB cables and all that kind of good stuff. So your front fan has a three pin header here. And this is off the one on the other side. So all you're going to do is line up the uh, edges, put them together, and that's going to connect this to the inside here. Now that, that Molex connector that I showed you earlier on that came in the package, you do need to use that to hook everything up. So I'm going to turn it around and show you uh, how I hooked up everything else. Okay, so when you get to the other side, first I want to explain, this was what was already in your case. All right, so you've got your two positive things in there, so you know how to put them in. So I just put them in there. Now, on the other end, you had your SATA, which plugged into a SATA on your power supply. And that gave power to everything else. And then take your Molex and just plug it into a Molex. Now, the other thing you needed to do was your two 200 millimeter case fans in the front were plugged in here already. So I just plugged in here and then this one that's left is simply going to go and plug into your motherboard to the RGB connector so once all that's done and everything is connected I know it's kind of convoluted but I just wanted to quickly show you that make sure everything is connected this one I had to connect this one as well once that's all done then all your fans everything is going to run and your RGB is going to be run off your motherboard now you can manually control it, as I already showed you, or you can, um, or if you have the software on your motherboard, you can plug it in. Once you plug it into the motherboard, you're going to control it with a software that's already built in. So I just wanted to show you that because that can be a little bit confusing. And even when I was doing it, I was like, okay, where does all this stuff go? Uh, it seems every time they put it out of case, there's some extra thing they're adding to it that makes it more confusing. So I hope that helped a little bit to somebody. All right, buddy, if you like that video, you know what to do. Don't forget to hit that subscribe or that like and check out those affiliate links. Thank you for watching. And now the biggest things about this case that I noticed is huge improvements on the uh, power supply shroud. Much easier to take off. You only have one thumb screw. Whereas in the before, uh, on some of the previous models, it was quite a fiasco. So I hope you like that. Check it out. Buy it if you like it. If you don't, that's fine. Move on to another one. Stay tuned for future videos. Thank you.